Um, how do you cope with any kind of anxiety that may come around performing and the pressure of being in the limelight outside of you just wanting to box and train? Yeah, that's it. I, I just want to box and train. Um, so like when I took my loss, it's just like what I'm doing is boxing and training and I lost, like don't make a big deal out of it. Sometimes when I win, it's like don't make a big deal out of it. But I just feel like when I accept the challenge, it's all fun and games in the gym, then you walk down the aisle to the ring and you think, what if I just turn back and I said, I can't do this? <laughs> like everyone's there, you know, um, the opponents in the ring or I'm first. You just come too far to turn back, so you just have to deal with the anxiety. It's like I went on this ride once called No Way Out in uh, the Fort, in Fort Park or in Towers or one of the theme parks, and it's basically that you walk down and there's no way back, and you have to go on the ride. And that's the same as the fight. I always refer it to that is that you, once you walk down that path, it's like you burn the bridge behind you, and there's no path back, so you might as well dominate the kingdom and take over. Okay, um, what would you say to a young? Shout out to my general, Coco One, for sponsoring man in the Patreon. Anyone else who wants to join Team YB, request content from the YB, interact with the YB, patreon.com slash the YB. Wow, so we just heard Dare from Anthony L. Patron Joshua. And I've got to be honest, initially, when I saw the newspapers post up Anthony Joshua reflects on his anxiety during ring walks. I thought they were going to be referencing the actual time on June 1st. But to be honest, all the little hints we've got, let's get it right. When was it? Before December 7th, AJ sat down, I think it was with BBC Radio 5 Live, something like that. He sat down with someone anyway, and he said then, yeah, something something wasn't right on June 1st, and I'm not going to say now what it was, but maybe one day... When I write a book, I'll tell you then. So we've had a lot of little hints, and I've got to be honest, every every day that goes forward, or sorry, every little piece of information we get, it's all pointing back to June 1st, essentially, that there wasn't smoke without fire. Let's get it right. On June 1st, a lot of the rumours were derived from Anthony Joshua had a panic attack or some sort of psychological situation. Now, I actually believe it came from concussion but still the fact of the matter is the result was the performance we saw on june 1st and even the performance itself every little thing compare when aj walked out on december 7th he walked out his chest was in the air his chin was up he just i just knew from that point i think i just knew from that point he just looked like a different animal that day and then look at the december 7th performance and look at the june 1st it's night and day not to mention for example in the corner on june 1st why am I feeling like this? All of these aspects point back to when you have anxiety attacks. I don't personally, I've never had one. To be fair, you, you don't have to, let me say this actually. I, I just said then, oh, I've never had one. But you don't, anxiety attacks aren't necessarily, what's the word? They're not necessarily chronic. Like some people do have chronic panic attacks where they have it on a f frequent basis. Other people, which I believe in AJ's case, is more like one-off based, i.e. if you've been concussed in sparring, which we know, when I looked into it, concussion increases your likelihood of having a panic attack by massive, massive increase in chance of having one. So when you factor that in, plus you're in the new environment and all these other stuff, God knows what else was going on. He may still have been ill. Either way, we don't know yet. All I know is, it's all coming, it's all, co all the rumours now are coming together nicely. That said, what's really, what really stood out to me, because initially when I heard about this, I thought, I felt a little bit, not angry, but I felt annoyed that AJ didn't come out and, and be honest. But I understand potentially why he couldn't be honest. Number one, he couldn't be honest on June 1st because he would have sold Eddie Hearn and, and his trainer down the... He would have sold Eddie Hearn and Rob McCracken down the river because if he'd have come out and said, oh, I was having a panic attack in the changing room and Eddie Hearn and whoever else pushed me out and, and made me get and made me go out there, then their, their licence is going to be under whatever. But still, I was a bit... After hearing this, I was a bit... Uh, I felt like, as a, as a somewhat supportive fan, I felt like 
he could have just said something. Yeah, I wasn't right. Do you know what I mean? Because all that time, he, he came, in fact, he came out, I think, the week after the fight, or a few days after the fight, he came out and literally sat down and said, listen, I don't have them things. Do you remember? He said, flout, I don't have any, I don't, I'm, that's not me. I don't have them problems. Which is fair enough, if it's the case that you are, what's the word, if you really are a Terminator, and you don't have any, like, emotions whatsoever, if you're not human, then that's one thing, which is how he came across, but to now say that, yeah, you know what, I have suffered with that, I feel that, and I think, to be fair, maybe, he's, he's only, he's learning, to be fair, and he's only 30 years old, so, the fact of the matter is, him saying he doesn't have them feelings six months ago, he may look at that now and say it probably was a bit of a mistake to say that, or even still, the other reason why he potentially couldn't have, or wouldn't have said anything on June 1st, or around June, about these issues is because he had a loss on his record, meaning that scrap all the scrap with scrap the fact he couldn't tell no one because it may affect Eddie Hearn's promotion ability or it may affect Rob McCrackhead's training ability. The fact of the matter is he got a loss, meaning that could he really afford to lose to Andy Ruiz on June first and then come out and start talking about? Oh, I had anxiety issues, not only because it makes him look like a, a spoil sport, oh, oh yeah, making excuses, not only because of that, but more, more to do so with the fact that he wouldn't have known, back in June, he wouldn't have known what this means to him, in as much as, competitively speaking, if he'd have come out and told everyone, I've had some psychological issues, you don't know you're going to win yet. He didn't know he was going to beat Andy Ruiz on December 7th. Yes, he can be confident, but you don't want to come out and give you and tell your opponent the game, do you? Or I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to give my opponent any advantage. I wouldn't want any. I wouldn't want my opponent, who's just beating me in devastating fashion, to have that over me. Does that make sense? So th the main reason I believe he probably kept it secret was to not give Andy Ruiz any. Not, not that it mattered, to be fair, because he got, he got his head boxed off, but still, I wouldn't want the world knowing that I've potentially got some issues until I've rectified the mistake. Does that make sense? Otherwise, what could have happened is, if AJ had come out on June 1st and said something, and then lost the rematch, it kind of, I don't know, it just don't... People, you, you kind of can get written off then, can't you? Oh, look, he's shot. Oh, look, he's... Even if he, even if he had to come in on December 7th and he wasn't psychologically shot and he wasn't mentally shot, still, that you get written off then, don't you? Whereas now, now you've rectified the mistake, no one can come and tell you, oh, well, look, he's, he's lost his head. Now it's nice and now them... Now he's fixed the problem. Not fixed the problem. Now he's proven that the, this thing isn't an issue. You can, no one can hang this over AJ's head now because he's proven in devastated fashion that no matter what happens, he can he sorts it out, and that's actually what uh, that's essentially what I've really taken from this whole or from this from this news article from this the quotes from AJ is the fact that do you know how even before we knew yes we got we got hints of oh we had a panic attack oh he was anxious oh this that the other yes we had hints of that but we didn't know and my point is on December seventh when he walked out. We didn't know, or we didn't know he was having these kind of problems. My po what I'm saying is, for him to come out that confident and for him to perform that confident, despite everything that's happened over the last six months leading up to, to December seventh, that there is a is a special individual, in a, from a sporting competitive point of view, to be able to to be able to have issues. Like everyone does. Like I used to think people don't get nervous, but obviously they do. Everyone. I don't think there's any athletes that don't. It's but it's not about the human body, in my opinion. From what I understand now about psycho psychology and sport, I believe the human body reacts the same for everyone. The difference is the great athletes, the elite athletes. It's not their body doesn't react. It's not. It's not their body doesn't get anxious. It's that they're able to take the anxiousness and convert it into positive energy. Not to say, it's not to sound cliche, oh, be positive. I'm talking about in reality. They take the, anx the anxious energy and they use it as fuel. They don't, they, don't, they don't let it sit on their shoulders and weigh them down. They let that, they let it turn into an expression almost, into a positive sporting expression. And that's what we saw on December 7th because that wasn't a man who choked. We've seen people choke before. That was the la that was as far away as you can get from choking. He went in there dominant and stuck to a game plan, and there was no, 
There was no unconfidentness about it. And that's what I'm taking from this. This dude, and I said it, I, I already kind of said it already. After seeing December 7th, I came out and said, this is proven to me, this man's the business. Because he had all that on his shoulders, he had the loss, and he had all these other things that we didn't even know about, i.e. the anxiety stuff. We didn't even know he he, he suffered, not suffered, but we didn't even know he, he had that them kind of little niggles. But to have all that in public and privately, to have all these issues in public and private, and to come out and perform like that, so dominant, as if he performed as if he didn't have a worry in the world. He performed as if he was the, the, the Don... Does that make sense? He, he, he fought that fight as if, he, as if nothing had happened. That there's a special individual. Not many people can do that. Most people, even if he'd won the fight, he may have won the fight anyway. But, meaning that if even if he hadn't have come in that confident and that... Almost worryless. He could have won anyway, but he, 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 that wasn't the case. He, 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 he didn't just go in there and, and scrape through and barely win and have all these have all this stuff on his head. He went in there and performed like there was squat, like perfectly in my opinion. A perfect so You can't look at any point in that fight and say, "Oh, look, there's, there's some questions there." And people can sit there and say, "Oh, well, Andy Ruiz wasn't his best and all this kind of crap." That, uh, irre irrelevant in my opinion. Andy Ruiz could as many things Andy Ruiz could could have done could have done in that fight, and it was nothing to do with his oh I haven't trained hard enough. That's just an excuse, and I'll tell you how we know that. And I talked about this a little while ago, a few days ago, and Andy Ruiz didn't end the fight gas, did he? Show me a point in the fight where Andy Ruiz gassed. If if we saw Andy Ruiz gassing, you can say yeah, well look, his cardio let him down, or his fitness let him down. His fitness didn't let him down. Everything that happened in that ring. Had nothing to do with Andy Ruiz not being in best shape, to be honest. Because at no point was Andy Ruiz's cardio out. He just got schooled. He got completely shut out. He looked like... I'm trying to think of an example. He looked like... Um, he looked like Vladimir Klitschko versus David Hay. Shut out. Absolutely door shut. They couldn't get a look in edgeways. That's what he looked like. And that wasn't nothing to do with fitness or nothing else. It was to do with a man came in there and he was just on point from head to toe. But to be able to, for AJ to be able to convert all of his private and public issues into that f faultless and worryless performance, I, I, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you switch off. I don't know how you turn off all them bits and, and just get on with it. And that's what I believe makes great athletes. Despite whatever else is going on, they're able to to focus and home in and perform as if they're on as if they're on top of the world and there's and they and they are they're almost they are, they're able to perform even though they're not perfect they're able to perform as if they were that's probably the best way of putting it he was able to perform on December seventh as if everything was perfect when it obviously wasn't as we're hearing now it's almost like having two brains you've got your re reality brain where everything's not perfect but when it comes to them 36 minutes you're able to switch off all the all the stuff all the noise that's going on and just solely focus on the task at hand and go in there and issue your lesson to Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz got a good schooling that there was a perfect teaching performance that's what we do know but I'm proud and I'm happy that this is the case because many other people We've seen fall off the wagon and they never get back on the wagon again. Or they fall off the wagon and that them issues, they never really resolved them. Look at Mike Tyson, for example. Now, to be fair, AJ's had a much stronger foundation than Mike Tyson ever had. But still, Mike Tyson, whilst he had, when he had his full team around him, and even then, even when, even when Tyson had his full team around him, obviously he wasn't able to, for, for whatever reason, he wasn't able to manage them, them issues he had. And they... Ended up e eating him up once Cuss went. Cuss, I think, was essentially the the sticky and glue that held Tyson together. He never, I don't think he ever had, because of his childhood and whatnot, not having a having such a vo volatile childhood. I don't think he never had. He never, he never learned the minerals and the, what's needed to perform on your own. Does that make sense? AJ, I think, is in a position where he can potentially perform on his own. If you take away. Rob McCracken, if you take away, you know what I mean, but most Tyson, he hasn't had that strong family base before. He has had, so he only had Cuss. When, when Cuss went and Rooney went, 
he was kind of left on his own and he he, he wasn't he wasn't mature and you've got to remember Tyson was 10 years he was doing stuff 10 years before AJ was Tyson was doing it at 20 years old but my point is either way Tyson he let them issues eat him up and ab absolve him absorb him and we saw what happened in the Holyfield fight and whatnot when Tyson let not you can call it anxiety. I think it probably was a bit of anxiety that ate Tyson up when he when he started when Tyson started seeing I think Teddy Atlas said similar things, but when Tyson started, in the second Holyfield fight, when Tyson started seeing that things were going to possibly go the same way as the first fight, he thought, you know what, let me let me check out of here. He wasn't able to, now don't get me wrong, Andy Ruiz isn't no Evander Holyfield, but still AJ, he, he was able to perform perfectly. Whereas Tyson, he often let his emotion get the better of him. And he, he, his emotions owned him. He wasn't able to block him out and just focus on the performance. He let the other factors come in and and it eat him up. But anyway, it's, it's not oh, Mike Tyson isn't the only guy either. You've got other people. In fact, most most of them go that way, where they end up losing themselves. Look at McGregor, for example. He's another one. Got ate up by all the hype. Oh, not, now he starts telling everyone, "Oh, well, I, I was drinking for this camp and whatnot." People, people lose the plot, man. And this just confirms hearing this from AJ. And now he's kind of admitted that he's not the Terminator, and he does have he is human. <laughs> he does have, he does have issues. But the fact that he's we know he has them, but he's proven that he can own them. It gives me more confidence because you'll hear people talking about oh uh, you hear LDBC saying oh look AJ oh AJ shook oh AJ this AJ that. The difference is. As a as a f competitive fan, yeah. When it comes to AJ versus Wilder, I now hand on my heart have a much higher level of confidence in AJ in that performance. Now I'll tell you why. Because before this last six months or a year, we didn't really know if AJ has it because we, ne we he's never had to show it before. Going in there and knocking people over, or going in there and winning all the time. You don't you don't know if you've got the minerals then, do you? <laughs> that isn't when your minerals were tested. Whereas Wilder has spent his whole career. Wilder can sit there and talk about, oh man, I'm, I'm the most feared in the division. You can talk about that, but Wilder's never been in there in, in there with anyone who's got power or who can beat him or who can take him to a place where he doesn't want to go. He's never had to show he can fight back and 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 dominate them emotions, has he? So my point is. Now when, now when, if, if and when, I'm not even sure Wilder will ever fight AJ, but if he does ever choose to fight AJ, us AJ fans, we'll all, we can go into that fight with a level of solace that we know that AJ's going to be, or we've got a better, we've got a much, there's a much higher chance of AJ being, of AJ not choking than there is for Wilder. Because Wilder's going to be dealing with, every, everything's going to be new to Wilder, fighting someone with power, fighting an, an elite athlete, yeah? Dealing with dealing with the big the big moment, he doesn't know what we don't know how Wilder's going to react when he's under pressure and he's actually getting hit hit properly. But AJ, on the other hand, we know that if he can be in the bottom of a barrel and still come back and perform like it never happened, like the Andy Ruiz rematch, for example, when stuff when stuff got top when stuff got tough and it was all on top of him, he came back and he performed like there was nothing wrong. Can Wilder do that? I'm not I'm not so sure. And we'll never know because we'll never go in there with anyone who can actually who's got a good chance of, of beating him. We know AJ can come look how devastatingly AJ, AJ got beat up. Not beat up, but he, look how look how he got put down four times essentially. Knocked all over the ring. And he was able to come back from that. We don't know if Wilder's got that level of staying staying power. And I've got a feeling he hasn't. That's why he don't dare test himself. He doesn't want he doesn't want to be put in that situation. He wants to run from it. And that there it's not a weak man a weak man isn't someone who challenges himself and stumbles is someone who wants to avoid the challenge in my opinion anyway i won't keep rambling on but this for me was it's nice to see aj transition and self actualize i feel all, all the time is kind of building and learning and it's making him a, a, an even more advanced athlete in my opinion yeah fighting a whole load of people you know can't hurt you or haven't got power like wilder does that don't challenger going in there with with beasts every day and mentally having to, and mentally knowing 
Do, any one of these dudes could put can put me on my ass. Any one of these dudes could knock me out with one shot. Dealing with that every day, that makes you mentally strong. And when you go in there with Wilder, who's just... He, Wilder's just, just another one of them dudes who AJ's been fighting back to back to back. He's not some big... He's not something different. Whereas when Wilder comes up against AJ, he's going to be everything that Wilder's feared for his whole career. Devastating power, devastating speed, devastating combat. See what I mean? Wilder's never fought any... Wilder's never mind all three of them combat. Never mind all three of them attributes at once. Speed, power, combinations. Never mind that. Af athletic gen athletic build and whatnot and physicality. Never mind them four stats. Wilder's never fought one of them stats. Tell me one person who's got uh, uh, elite level power, elite, elite level combinations, elite level speed. Show me one. Oh, Ortiz, million year old Ortiz. You joking? 